Welcome to Digital Asset News, take top stories in cryptocurrency digital assets, and break them down to bite-sized pieces. Today, we got a lot of bullish stuff to talk about. First up, Twitch director Sean Puri moves a quarter of his net worth into Bitcoin to front-run wave of institutional capital. Is this guy a genius or is he falling victim to FOMO also? Plan B from the stock to flow ratio says Bitcoin is going to enter an enormous bull run year in 2021 and outlines his price targets and biggest risk to Bitcoin. And here's a hint, it's at 300,000. And we'll go over those two bullish articles, but first I just want to say thanks everybody who has delegated to the D News Cardano stake pool. We're almost come up at 7 million, so uh, not too shabby in five days. I just want to say thanks to everybody. Just so you know, once we hit 63 million, that means it'll be it'll be uh, saturated and we can't do any more. Uh, it'll look something like this. This is ADLT2 pool. And once you go above 63 million, you get saturated and you start to re uh, lose rewards. So before that happens, we'll let everybody know. If you're still interested in delegating your Cardano to the stake pool, made a very simple uh, web page, which I will link in the description below. Looks something like this. And when you're on the page at the very top, all you have to do is just click on uh, wallets or you can just scroll down, whichever you want to do. And then there's a video right here about 13 minutes and I show you how to stake with Daedalus, Yolroy or ADA Lite wallet. So first, let's get into what's going on in the market. So today it is Sunday, December 13th, and it is around 1 p.m. El Paso, Texas time. And uh, things are up. Usually that's not how it goes on Sunday. Usually we take a dip on Sunday, almost every Sunday. But here we are, 2.5% uh, up, and we're at 20000 for Bitcoin. 5% for Ethereum. We're almost going to break that $600 barrier. I like that. XRP, watch out. 50 cents above. Actually, I'm sorry, 50, almost 52 cents. Wow. 3% up. Oh, amazing. Tethers tell you nobody cares. Litecoin is up mass, uh, pretty big, 8%. Again, they're part of that uh, uh, PayPal quadrant, which is uh, Bitcoin, Bitcoin Cash, Ethereum, and Litecoin. So they're going to do well for the entire year moving forward. Uh, Chainlink up uh, 7.9. Wow. Uh, what are you, $13? Bitcoin Cash uh, making a run up to 78. A lot of good things are going on with Bitcoin Cash. I'm trying to get the, uh, the director of Bitcoin.com to come on here, Danish. Hopefully, he's not too busy. He can come on. Uh, Cardano. Wow. Hey, uh, Cardano up uh, 15 cents. It's pretty good. 4.2 for Polkadot, Binance Coin, and Stellar. Wow. Stellar's making money moves. Look at that. Almost 10%. I like to see that. Bitcoin SV 2.7. Yeah, sure. EOS. I don't even know why. Honestly, between us, I don't know why EOS is here. I don't get it. Uh, NEM 1, Bitcoin Cash, and whatever else. Okay, not really that big. So let's take a look at what it would be as we take a look at uh, switching from USD to Bitcoin. How would we have fared if we would have invested into altcoins? And guess what? We would have been up 2.5% on Ethereum, 0.6 for XRP, 5% for Litecoin. That's pretty big. 5% for Chainlink, Cardano, Binance Coin, almost everything. If you would have invested in anything outside of Bitcoin, you would have been up pretty good. And this isn't usually the case all the time, and only time will actually tell uh, who is the genius who decided to pick that low cap gem that had a thousand X or whatever else it is, or if it just went better just to go uh, all in on Bitcoin. That is the real story, and that will be determined in, in the future. So speaking of the future, I wanna talk to you about this article. This, this right here, this was pretty pretty fascinating to me. Twitch director, Sh Shan Puri, I think I hope I'm saying his name right, but. Twitch.com, if you don't know, uh, it was acquired in 2014 uh, with Google for a measly billion dollars. And the gaming platform, uh, Social Network, continues to break its own high scores. Uh, Twitch boasts a valuation of about $3.79 billion. So uh, this guy, director of Twitch, I'm not sure if he was uh, involved in that uh, acquisition back in 2014, but chances to say he's probably got a good amount of money. I don't know how much it is, but it looks pretty good. But this guy says, hey, I am going to put a quarter of my net worth into Bitcoin. A quarter. And I mean, I'm pretty bullish on Bitcoin, but I don't got a quarter in my in Bitcoin. I just don't. But uh, I mean, that's pretty amazing just to go, you know what? I think it's going to happen. And he did it. And here's his, his reasoning. He says, I think it's a rare opportunity to front run a wave of institutional capital that will come into Bitcoin in the next two years. And you know, he's gotta be right. I mean, look at Grayscale. I mean, they're buying up things left and right like nobody's business. And then MicroStrategy, don't even get me started about that. I mean, that guy, Sailor, has convinced everybody Bitcoin is the next big play. And then we got Square and we got Galaxy Digital and he got, I mean, even like like the big players on, on TV or, or the, the investment legends like Paul Tudor Jones and Duncan Miller and all those guys. I mean, they're all saying the same thing. 
we want Bitcoin. So what he's saying here is like, I want to get ahead of it because these institutions can't move that fast to buy these things. And I want to I want to be that uh, before it all gets in. On top of the fact that also uh, PayPal apparently is buying up like almost 70 percent of the new Bitcoin. That's a lot. So this was a pretty good, pretty good play. But but the question was, he just said 25 percent and then they're like 25% of what your whole whatever and so with his initial tweet he said 25% and then a user asked him if it referred to his entire net worth and Puri replied yup <laughs> that's a ballsy move so this is what he said people think this time it hits 20k is just like last time but it's not for many reasons and he he goes into some other things and, and it kind of gets a little bit dull here but that is really the truth this 20k uh, magical number uh, people are starting to uh, you know they actually put comments in they say you know what Rob I think it's gonna be like last time it's gonna go to 20k and then it's gonna drop all the way down to uh, 4k like it did be or 5k like it did before in 2017 2018 and that's not the case you have to remember back in 2017 which I was there uh, I actually went through that whole process um, you have to realize that it was just based on a lot of FOMO and there was not there was no really no ground really put down. It was just a bunch, like I said, white paper and, and hopes and dreams. And there wasn't really much there to really propel us to the next level. And it was nice. It, I mean, it could show it was there to kind of show us what it could be. But it went down because we didn't have the infrastructure put in place. We didn't have the things that we have now. We didn't have the people behind us, the, the capital, the institutions really in here. And uh, this is how it is. So when people say, well, it's going to crash back down, I mean, not only is it different than that time frame, and this and this is just a, a quick little little snippet of, of time from really the beginning of 2013 all the way to 2020, uh, you can just see how it was pretty flat. But to really delve into the, the details, we have to take a look at the halving. And when we take a look at the halving, because people say, oh, it's just going to go up and then come back down just like it's done before. But you understand, we are in a whole new halving. So when this all happened, the, the very first halving, because Bitcoin was around 2009, right? So in 2012, it had the halving. And then about a year later, it hit an all-time high. And of course, it corrected, right? And then we had this beautiful, <laughs> when I came around uh, in 2017, it just hit this all-time high and then it came back down. And what I think it is, I truly believe it. this is what's going on, is that we are right here, right just like in 2016 and right just like in uh, early 2012, uh, late uh, 2011, where there was just a bunch of, I mean, there's a big dip here, but a lot of sideways action right here, right? A lot of sideways action right here, right? And then again, we had a big drop in this and that. And then we had a lot of sideways action where people were just like, eh, whatever. So you have to understand that even if we, go all the way back up to 20,000, just look at the very first one. Because when it hits, let's see, let me, let me break down even more. The all-time high, which was, was in 2013, the first halving was in 2012, November, took about a year. And then the price itself was about a thousand bucks. Here's the reward, the reward era, the all-time high, and the price was 12, so it went from 12 to a thousand dollars. So we take a look at this. That's pretty high from, I mean, to them, Back then, I wasn't around then. I don't know if you were, but it was probably mind blowing. They're like, that can't last. And of course, it didn't. So it went back down, but it never went back down to 12 bucks. That's the thing. That's the thing you have to remember. No, it didn't hit a thousand dollars, just stayed a thousand bucks. It took a little while, but it just moved sideways at around 400, 500 bucks, which was about half the price. Wasn't that about what it was for Bitcoin? Around nine, 10, 11, 12, somewhere in there for the longest time. And then we jumped back up. So the same thing here. So 20,000, it went down to about 10 or 11, 12. And now we're back up to 20. So we're kind of like from this point to this point, somewhere around here, I guess, actually, we're about the same price, a thousand bucks. Well, now it'd be 10 or 12,000. So as time moves forward, we're going to start to do eh, 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 this part right here because I believe we're in 2016 again. It all just repeats in a big cycle. And the big difference, though, is that it's just not a bunch of retail. Because back down here, it was just a bunch of anarchists and libertarians. They're like, you know what? Down with the system. And Bitcoin's the best thing of all time. And then, of course, retail picked it up and go, you know what? We'll take it from here. And they did pretty well. And now what's happening is that you still have anarchists. You still have libertarians. You still have retail. They're all three there. But now we got a fourth member, and they're called institutions. And those are the ones that are going to blast us way above this this 20k which is i think is just like going to be a sideways channel for a little bit 
And to help me clarify that point, I'm going to move on to the very next article.